Hi there, I'm Leah Veru. It's great to be here today. Uh, you can see my Twitter username over there. If you have any questions and we don't have time at the end, you can always ping me on Twitter and ask me. So, regular expressions. Many people use many different names to refer to regular expressions, such as regular expression, regex, regex. Uh, some even use the term ASCII puke. Hopefully, by the end of this presentation, if you're one of them, you'll have started to change your mind a bit. So, I'm going to ignore this for now. The first three names can be described in a much more concise way, at least if we lived in a world where uh, everybody was a developer, we could refer to all three of them just with this line, which is basically a regular expression itself. And that's what regular expressions are. They're a way to describe a set of strings. And why is that useful? We can use them to check if, some, if, if a string matches a certain format. Uh, we can use them in HTML5 for form validation with the pattern attribute. Uh, we can use them to extract certain parts uh, out of strings or to replace certain parts with something else. We can use them uh, when refactoring in our text editor or IDE, um, or even in command line tools or databases, and many more tools. And luckily, the syntax used in most of these tools is pretty much the same. JavaScript has some limitations compared to other languages, but it's pretty much consistent. So uh, to start with the syntax, the very basic rules is that every regular expression literal starts with a slash, ends with a slash. What's between the slashes is, is the pattern we're trying to match. And after the slashes, there, uh, there's the so-called flags, which in JavaScript are just uh, a combination of G, I, and M in, any, in, in no particular old order. So while I'm explaining the, the syntax, uh, you can go to this web application I made for this talk to test it for yourself if you want. And there are going to be some small challenges scattered throughout the talk to which you can participate through Twitter. And whoever wins uh, gets an O'Reilly regular expressions book. Uh, so the very basic regular expression uh, is just a few letters or symbols uh, with just, that just match the, uh, the exact string. Like, this, for example, matches A anywhere in the string. It doesn't even need to start or end with A. It just matches anywhere. Unless, of course, you restrict it, which we'll see how you can do later. And by default, it's case insensitive, so this won't match anything. But you can use the I flag to change this. That's very useful when testing, when testing for example, if an element is of a particular type, because the node name can have any kind of capitalization. Uh, if you're not very familiar with regular expressions, you'd assume that this would match something like 1.5. Probably you can guess that it, it would match it anywhere in the string. But if you're not very familiar with them, you probably wouldn't expect it to match this, or this, or even this. But the dot matches pretty much any character except line breaks. But you can change this behavior if you just escape it with a backslash. And now it only matches the dot. This is called a meta character, which means it's a character that doesn't only match itself, or that it might not even match itself at all. It has a special meaning. We have 12 total meta characters, and if you want to use them literally, in most cases you need to, ex to escape them, not in every case. Uh, regular expression engines are quite smart, and in some cases they can figure it out on their own that you are just interested in matching these characters literally. So in this case, we have a regular expression that matches four consecutive A's, like this. But what if we wanted to match 12 of them, or 100 of them? Would we have to keep typing A, 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 A 100 times? We can use something called a quantifier to specify this in a much more concise way. This is exactly equivalent to the previous regular expression, but much shorter, especially if we wanted to match more A's. This, you might think that this is very strict. What if I don't want to match exactly 10 A's? What if I want to match like from zero to 10 or from 10 to 100? Um, if you include a comma after the number, it basically means at least that number. So if you have four comma, it means at least four. But as you've noticed, the regular expression engine matches as much as it can. That's called greediness. If you give the regular, the regular expression engine a choice, it will match as many as it can. You can set an upper bound as well, like four, from four to five, 
which only matches up to, four, uh, up to five A's. And there are certain shortcuts as well. For example, if you want to match any number of A's from zero to whatever, this is, uh, it's quite interesting in this case to notice that you can actually match the empty string. This regular expression matches the empty string. We don't have anything, but we want to match A from zero times to whatever. So um, since we don't have any A's, it matches the A zero times. But due to greediness, if we have any A's, it will match all of them, as many as it can consume. So we can use this shortcut to match, ex to match exactly this, from zero times to whatever, to infinity. If we want uh, the A to be present at least one time to avoid matching the empty string, which is usually what we want, in most cases we don't want to match the empty string, we can use a plus sign instead, which means from one time to infinity. Or if we want something that's maybe present there, but not always, but not necessarily, we can use the question mark. This matches uh, from zero to one, and due to greediness, it always matches in this case one. But if we don't have any A's, it matches the empty string, like here. It doesn't find any A, so it matches the empty string. And if you recall, in our original uh, regular expression about how we call regular expressions, we did something like this, which means it matches both regex and regex because the P is optional. So greediness can be really annoying in some cases. For example, assume you want to match uh, HTML tags. Uh, you know that it's pretty simple HTML. In, most commonly, you wouldn't want to use regular expressions to match HTML, but in some cases, when you know what to expect, it, you can do that. So uh, here you want to match HTML strings to strip them out, for example, from, the, from a comment if you don't want to allow HTML. So you think of uh, writing a regular expression like this, angle bracket, something, whatever number of times, and then a closing angle bracket. But it doesn't match what you expect. You just want it to match this and the closing tag. But it doesn't do that. It matches the entire thing. Why? Because it, it, it matches the first angle bracket here, and then it goes and matches as many things as it can, and here it finds this angle bracket. So technically, it's correct. It's not wrong, but it's not what you wanted. You can change this behavior and make uh, and, and reverse greediness by putting a question mark after the quantifier. And now, instead of matching as many as it can, it matches as, as little as it can, the fewer number of uh, characters it can. So now it does exactly what you want. It matches both the start and the end string. You can even do things like this. If you want something from zero to one uh, times, you can have two question marks, one after the other. In case you want to say to use some th to use alternation between certain characters, you can uh, you can use uh, square brackets. This basically means any character uh, that's either A or B or C. So this matches any of them. It doesn't match D, for example. And you can even use the plus sign to say any number of uh, these characters. And if you want to match uh, multiple characters, like for example, assuming you want to match a letter, uh, according to this, you could start doing this sort of thing and write the entire alphabet in the character class. But there's something better you can do. You can use ranges from A to Z. And now it matches every letter. Every letter you can think of. It doesn't match numbers or symbols, but it matches letters. And if, you can even concatenate multiple of these ranges to produce a union. Like if you want to match letters and numbers, you can do something like this. And you can even add single characters after them. This matches both letters and numbers and the underscore like this. Another thing to, notice, to, to note is that most meta characters don't need escaping in square brackets. There are very few that do uh, the correct, the closing square bracket, because otherwise the regular expression engine won't know when to stop, when the character uh, class ends. But most of them don't really need escaping. 
Also, we get some shortcuts here for very commonly needed character classes. For example, slash w means basically something similar to the character class we did before, uh, uh, letters, numbers, and the underscore. It's basically equivalent to A to Z, uh, both lowercase and uppercase, uh, zero to nine, and the underscore. So I can type like any uh, letter and it keeps matching it, or numbers, or underscores, or any combination of them. Uh, one bad thing is that it's not Unicode aware. So if you want to match, like, uh, for example, Greek letters, that won't work. Uh, there's also another character class that's a bit more restrictive than this. Uh, it only matches digits. It's basically equivalent to a character class from 0 to 9. So this, this, this would match any integer. It won't match decimals. And there's also a character class uh, that matches white space, slash s. Any kind of white space. Uh, tabs, uh, line breaks, spaces. It's actually way more uh, wide than what I'm showing there. And that's why I have the, not, not the equals sign, but the about equals, because it's not exactly equal to that character class. It's Unicode aware, so it supports many all the weird uh, white space characters that Unicode has. And you can even combine those character classes to form something more, com more complex. For example, if you want to match um, something that's letters, digits, underscores, or hyphens, you can do this, which combines the word character uh, class and the hyphen. So now it will even match even if we have a hyphen there which is kind of useful for matching things like telephone numbers. Uh, we can use this uh, to count words in uh, some text. There, these are two different ways, each with, its, with their own advantage. Uh, for example, the first one matches all the words and it counts how many words it matched. The second one splits the text uh, where it has white space and counts uh, how many um, how many words you have according to that. Uh, the second method is much better because even though it will match some things that might not be words, like if you have a stray dollar sign, for example, but how, how common is that? The first one has a much bigger bug. It won't match any, no, any non-English word uh, because that's only, that only matches English letters, not even assented English letters, just plain old ASCII English letters. And that's many texts don't, uh, don't only have English words. So this is one of the first of the challenges I mentioned in the beginning of the talk. If you haven't noted the URL with the web app, you can see it at the top of this slide. So this is just a test challenge. It doesn't, uh, it, it won't matter in the competition at all. It's just so that you can test the system and see how it works and everything. You have a minute for that. And the, the tweets you post are going to appear here, but uh, don't be disappointed if your tweet doesn't. It doesn't mean that it won't be counted, because it takes. there's a bit of a lag. It takes about 25 seconds for something to appear there. Basically, this counts tweets with the regexplained hashtag. So if you tweet directly from the web app, that will be added automatically. Okay, I guess it works. So this is the first of the challenges. You should write a regular expression that matches a hex color. Um, these are some examples of the hex uh, colors you need to match. They might be uppercase or lowercase or three-digit hex codes or six-digit hex codes.
By the way, if you're uh, interested in who won the book, I'll tweet about that after the talk. I can't really decide on that right this moment. Whoa, 11 tweets. Some of them got quite close. So one first thought might be something like this. The problem with this is not that it doesn't match some of the hex codes. The problem is that it matches too many, and some of them are wrong. It will match hex, code with hex codes with four characters or five characters, which are invalid. You need to only match hex codes with three or six characters. So uh, that's not exactly correct. That's uh, more like it. It matches any, um, any uh, letter from A to F or digit three times. And then this thing needs to be, this pattern is repeated once uh, or twice. So by combining these quantifiers, you can match, uh, you can basically create some sort of quantifier that's either three or six times. It's impossible to accidentally match hex codes with four characters or five characters with this. So uh, character classes can also be negated. Uh, in this case, you, you, this matches any letter from A to F, but this could also be written in an, uh, in an alternative way. Um, a letter from G to Z and negate this. That's not exactly equivalent to the first one because that will also match uh, symbols, for example. There's nothing that says it should only match letters. It, this matches anything that's not a letter between J and Z. We even have shortcuts uh, for the negated character classes of, uh, for the negated versions of the character classes we mentioned before. For example, um, the negated version of this could be written more simply as this. That matches anything that's not a letter or number or uh, underscore. See, for example, here it matches only the percentage sign. Or now it matches both of these symbols. It also matches white space. Pretty much anything that's not a letter or number or underscore. Say, uh, similarly, the negated uh, version of the digit is the capital slash capital G. The, the, the D, that matches anything except digits. So it will match every character of this string except the digit. And the negated version of white space that will match anything that's not white space. An interesting fact is that even the dot itself is a character class. It's basically this negated character class. Any, what, what does this mean? It means anything that's not a line break character. That, that's exactly what the dot is. See, this matches every character in this string. And same happens if we use the dot. Another interesting, an, inter an interesting thing you can do with uh, negated character classes is to provide an alternative of, of patterns like the ones we discussed before. Uh, for example, st stripping HTML. You could either use lazy quantifiers w by using the question mark, or you can use a negated character class, which basically means anything that's not in a closing angle bracket as many times as you want. These are basically equivalent, and the second one is slightly faster. I feel I need to remind you again that uh, it's an anti-pattern to parse arbitrary HTML with regular expressions. I need to say this because otherwise I'll get people after the talk telling me, you shouldn't do that. Well, if you know what to expect, you can do it, but in arbitrary HTML, you shouldn't. You can use parentheses to group many alternatives and the pipe character to basically, uh, as basically some sort of or 
In this case, it matches either AB or BA. It matches both of them. And here it matches either of them. And an interesting uh, fact about parentheses is that they don't just do grouping. They also capture. In this case, the entire regular expression matches uh, the CBA. But what's matched by the parentheses is actually stored by the regular expression engine. You can retrieve it if you use the proper methods. So here you got the entire match, CBA or CAB, but also the submatch of AB is stored. This is very useful in some cases because uh, otherwise you'd have to use multiple regular expressions on the same thing. But in many cases, you don't really need it and it consumes extra memory. It's, it's slower, and in many cases, you don't need it. Like, for example, in this case, if you want to just match both of JavaScript and ECMAScript, and you don't really ma care about matching that sub the substring that's either Java or ECMA, you don't really need capturing here, do you? It's pointless. It just consumes memory for no reason. So what can you do? You can opt out of capturing by using a question mark and a colon. And now you just have the entire match. This is basically, a, a, this group is ignored when capturing. This is the second of these challenges. Um, it's about matching numbers, negative integers, positive integers. They can have a sign in front of them. They may not have a sign in front of them. They might be decimals. They might not have uh, a part before the decimal point. They might not have a part after the decimal point. And that's why you have two minutes. Okay, time's up. That got quite a few tweets. And some of them are very, very close. So one first thought might be something like this. It matches uh, the sign, op the optional sign, and it matches any number of digits or um, decimal points. By the way, an interesting thing is that here the decimal point, the, the dot doesn't need to be escaped, even though it's a meta character, because it's inside a character class. Uh, and it matches any, any number of them in any order. The problem is it's too lax, because it might, it, it does match the, the numbers we're interested in, but it also matches, it also has many false positives. It allows any number of decimal points, like even consecutive dots even consecutive dots with no numbers at all. This is, a, this is something that's much closer, 
and it's what I used to do. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, it's quite good. It, the only problem is it has one uh, significant false negative. It allows number, it, it doesn't allow numbers uh, that, are, that just have uh, a part before the decimal point and the decimal point, nothing after that. It depends on whether you want to allow these numbers. Many people are okay with not allowing them. Uh, and another, uh, another alternative is this, which is, which is basically the same as the previous one, except this, uh, th there's a star here instead of a, uh, a plus sign. That means it matches any number of digits after the decimal point, even zero. Uh, that solves the problem of the previous one, but it allows many false positives, like just a dot or just a sign and a dot and things like that. Something that's accurate is uh, the last one. It matches exactly the kinds of numbers we want, but, and it doesn't have uh, any, po any false positives that I can think of, at least. But is it, is it really worth it? Sometimes it's, it's better to allow some false positives or some false negatives, depending on your application, rather than writing a huge regular expression that matches exactly what you want. Especially on the client side, like for data validation, for example, since you're, you're going to verify them on the server side anyway. Uh, if we want to match something that's explicitly in the beginning of the string, for example, an A, but only if it's in the beginning of the string, we can use the correct character. Here, the A doesn't match because it's inside the string. It needs to be in the beginning of the string to match. And there's also something similar we can do about the end of the string. Here, the A will only match if it's at the end of the string and in the beginning, because we also have the correct here. So if we have both of them, this string will only match uh, a literal A. So it's kind of pointless to use regular expression in this case. Just, use, just compare the two strings. You can also change the way uh, these anchors behave if you use the M flag. Uh, here, uh, since we don't have the M flag, this needs to be present, uh, this needs to be both at the beginning and the end of the string. If we have a line break and we use a multi-line flag, the correct character matches at the beginning of every line and the dollar sign matches at the end of every line. So we can have anything here, and as long as A is on its own, on its own line, it will match. These anchors are very useful in the polyfill for string prototype trim. Uh, that's like the shortest polyfill you can write about that function. Uh, it basically, it replaces uh, white space that's either in the beginning or at the end. Uh, at this, uh, or at the end of the string. It's more performant to, do, to split this regular expression into two and do two replaces, uh, one for the, uh, for the white space in the beginning and w one for the white space at the end. But I think that's a bit of premature optimization in most cases, and sometimes being concise is better than uh, saving one millisecond. This, uh, uh, this is called an assertion because it matches, uh, it matches, uh, it, it never consumes any characters. For example, if you have something like this, it matches at, at this point between the dollar sign and the five. The reason is that this, the, uh, the word, uh, word boundaries match anywhere you have uh, at any point between a word character and a non-word character. Remember when we explained what these uh, predefined character classes do? One matches letters and uh, digits and the underscore character, and the other one is the exact opposite. So the, the word boundary matches at any point where you have uh, one character that's not a word character, and, and it's, it's next to another that is. For example, here it matches two times because the order isn't significant. It will also match on the beginning of the string. If you have a, a word character that's at the beginning of the string or at the end of the string, that will the the end and uh, the beginning of the string and the end of the string are basically considered treated like non-word characters in this case. 
So that's very useful. Uh, if you remember, before we, before we got class list in HTML5, we needed to write our own functions for adding classes or replacing classes or removing classes. And usually those functions created the regular expression on the fly that had the class name like between uh, word characters. So it matched like the, when it was in the entire string or when it was part of it or if it was uh, in the middle. Of course, uh, it's consistent with uh, everything we saw so far. There's also a negative word boundary, a non-word boundary, which is basically the opposite. A non-word boundary matches, whoops. A non-word boundary matches uh, between two word characters or between two non-word characters. Like this, for example. Assertions, uh, like we showed, are always zero width. In most cases, if you just care about testing whether a string fits a particular format, you don't need to use assertions. Assertions are very useful when you care about what matched, not only if it matched. There, there are also uh, much more complex assertions, uh, which are called look-aheads. In, in this case, you want to match a B that's after an A. And this does exactly what you want. But what if you want to only match an A if it precedes a B, but you don't want to actually match the B? You can use a look-ahead for that. That's exactly what this says. I want to match the A when it's it, when a B follows, but the look-ahead itself doesn't take part in the matching. What's, what's, what I find quite interesting is that you can even include capturing groups inside the look-ahead. So in this case, in this case, you will match a zero string because this entire regular expression matches the zero string, but you will also match a B because it's, that's outside the, uh, the full match because it's, uh, it's included in capturing parentheses. This should actually be under the B. It, it appears I found a bug in the, this uh, little app, but it should actually match the B. There's also a negative version of a look ahead. This basically means match the A when it's not followed by B. So anything can be after it, and it will still match, except B. This is incredibly useful. Uh, and in most languages, there's also the opposite concept of a look behind that matches things only if they're after other things. That's called look behind. Unfortunately, ECMAScript doesn't have look behind. There, there's some discussion about adding it on uh, ECMAScript Next. I, I really hope it makes it. But right now, uh, there's no browser that supports look behind in ECMAScript, sadly. This is the third of these challenges. It's about matching dates. It's actually almost impossible to match with a regular expression to match any valid date. There's always going to be some uh, false positives. Basically, the one that wins this challenge is whoever gets closest.
Okay, time's up. Good, this one seems to be the closest by Croft Dracula, from a first glance at least. It's really hard to tell so quickly. So uh, one very loose regular expression for, the, for it could be this. Uh, like I said, that's quite loose. It will match months like uh, 99 or days like 99, for example, which don't really exist. A closest one would be something like this, which at least matches the correct months and the correct days, but it also has some flaws. It will match dates like 34, 31st of February, for example, which, is never, which never exists. Uh, or it will match dates like 29th of February, which only exists once every, uh, for certain years. But if we really try to go that deeply with regular expressions, the result will be either it's either impossible to do that or it's you'll end up with a huge regular expression that nobody will be able to read so it's basically the same thing as i was saying before sometimes you need to know when to stop a very interesting thing you can do with look ahead uh, is to mimic certain patterns uh, like intersection like when you want uh, a, a certain string to match multiple regular expressions. Usually you do that uh, at the code level. Uh, like if our string matches uh, this regular expression and it matches this regular expression and it matches this regular expression, like in the JavaScript. But you can actually do that just on the regular expression level, just by using one regular expression. Because it, it takes advantage of the fact that lookaheads don't change the matching position. So if you have something after the lookahead, it, it matches at the same position as the lookahead started from. So you can have any number of lookaheads after the first one, and they will match on the same string because it doesn't adv advance the matching position. So basically, uh, in, in this case, for example, you want to have a six-letter uh, password or more with at least one number, one letter, one, and one symbol. Doing this without lookaheads would be really hard, so most people would result in doing it with multiple regular expressions. But if you use lookaheads, uh, you can have this lookahead that checks if the, that there's at least one digit. Then this starts matching at the same position, since the first one doesn't consume anything, and it checks that there's at least one letter. And this one checks that there's at least one symbol. And finally, if you want to actually match the string, you have this that matches uh, anything that has at least six characters. So basically, you have one regular expression, one line that matches all these conditions. Similarly, you can do subtraction, like any number that's not divisible by 50, something that matches this pattern but doesn't match this pattern. That's basically a very similar thing. You're just using negative look ahead instead of positive look ahead. And of course, you can use a... Um, a subcase of the, of the previous of subtraction, which is negation, anything that doesn't match one pattern, which is basically a negative look ahead, and then you have anything like a dot uh, that can match any any number of characters. The, uh, this one matches pretty much anything. If you also want to match line breaks, it's quite easy to wrap it in a character class. Um, so that will match any kind of string that doesn't contain foo. Again, that would be really hard to do with uh, plain regular expressions without look ahead. And the last part of the syntax, if you want to write uh, something like a, synth a code highlighter, you'll probably encounter something like this. Uh, this is supposed to match strings. For example, this. The problem with the regular expression I have here is that it will also match strings like this, where the quote marks are mismatched. And that's really bad because you might actually have uh, double quote, quote marks inside a string with single quote marks. For example, he said boo. And it only matches part of the string. That's wrong. It could seriously break an application. You can use uh, the back, uh, back references, uh, which is basically a slash and a number. And the number refers to uh, the index of the capturing group you have. Remember, parentheses create capturing groups. 
the, reg the regex en engine remembers what parentheses matched, and you can actually use what it remembers in the same regular expression by using this. This basically means I want to match here whatever this matched. If it matched a single quote, I, this is equivalent to a single quote. If it matched a double quote, that's equivalent to a double quote. So uh, you can match strings properly. Of course, this has some problems as well. Um, it doesn't account for escaped quote marks. Like this is a, is treated like a, a, a quote mark that delimits the string, where it it actually should be ignored. It should be treated as a regular character. Which brings us to the next to the last challenge, which is to improve that regular expression. I remind you the regular expression was this, so that it actually uh, accounts for this case, escaped uh, quote marks, and it also uh, accounts for double backslashes, escaped backslashes. I think the answer to that is pretty much the most elegant regular expression of scene, as you'll see after this. Okay, time's up. So the answer is basically this. It's very similar to the previous one. Uh, it kind of takes advantage of how uh, regex engines work. So if they can match a backslash with something, they will match it. But they also have to match uh, the quote mark at the end. So that basically takes uh, into account all the cases that are, that, in, that, are, that are of interest to us. So it matches exactly what we want. I think it's really elegant for what it does. Um, it, I didn't come up with it. I came up with something very close. Uh, it's, it's Stephen Leviton that came up with it. Uh, so to wrap up, some best practices. Like I said many times throughout this talk, sometimes practicality wins over precision. Sometimes you need to, you need to uh, accept the fact that you will allow some false positives or some false negatives, otherwise you'll, it will drive you crazy. This regular expression at the end is what you need to use to match email addresses if you want to be really, really precise. Is that practical? I don't think so. That's huge. I don't think any sane developer would actually use this. So when you're matching email addresses, anything shorter will allow some false positives or some false negatives. It depends on your application which of the two you will allow. For example, if you're doing form validation, uh, it's usually better to allow false positives than uh, false negatives because if somebody has an email address you didn't foresee when you were crafting your regular expression, they'll, be, they'll go through a very distressing experience. 
uh, their very valid email address won't be allowed. And it's pointless anyway, because they may as well enter an, an email address that doesn't exist, but has a very valid format. So it's better to allow some uh, degrees of freedom there. Also, keep it simple. If, if you can't do it without using regular expressions in a, an amount of code that's not insane, don't use regular expressions. Like, obviously, if the alternative is using 10 lines of code to do it with string functions, regular expressions are better. But if you can do it with just an index of, uh, for example, just use the string function. It's faster. And speaking about performance, some tips are avoid greedy quantifiers. Uh, if it suits your use case, better convert them to lazy ones. Uh, don't forget anchors. Uh, obviously, if it suits your use case, uh, try to use uh, anchors, because that means the regular expression can decide, can realize it failed, uh, the match failed much more early. So it doesn't need, it, it doesn't need to, to try many different combinations, uh, which is basically um, uh, a special case of the third point. Be as specific as possible. As possible. Uh, for example, don't use the dot uh, when, you really need, when you really need to match a, a letter, for example. Just use a character class, which is much more specific. Uh, prefer non-capturing groups. If you don't need to capture, just add this question mark and the colon. It's faster. And minimize backtracking. Uh, backtracking is what the regular expression engine will do when it starts matching and goes on and on and on. And then it realizes, oops, I went too far. So it backtracks. And it backtracks one position, one character, and then another character until it finds a match. Uh, so if you can avoid this behavior, uh, try to avoid it. It can be very costly. In some cases, it can even uh, completely make your application hang. There, there are some cases about that. Uh, Google the term uh, destructive backtracking, I think. Uh, there are some regular expressions that uh, are so bad in that regard that can completely hung your application in, with very short strings. Um, so uh, thank you. Here are my contact details. I hope you learned something.